see if I can <clears throat> figure this out. Hi, everyone. Like you said, I'm here to talk about an alternative to smoke ping that we wrote. Um, wait, this is the button. All right, so it's essentially, it's written in Python. It's designed to be lightweight, really fast, and not in Perl. Not to tease people about Perl too much, but uh, which I'll get to later. There's a couple links here if you guys want to look. There's real-time demos up. I have a problem with installing Perl dependencies, and it, it's become like an hours-long thing, and it shouldn't be that long. So it's really nothing against Perl. It's just I decided to see if we could we had to do a smoke ping installation and I talked to one of my lead developers and said, what are you doing today? And it didn't sound that important, so I said, let's just try to write this quick and we'll give it a day and see if it works. And in short, yes, it did work. So our goals was easy to install. It should be a one command installation. Python is great with their virtual environment so you can have it run as a non-trusted user. It should have a real-time display. We already had trading charts. So we just kind of stole from that. Um, the fast I.O. and queuing engine is good because I don't ever like to have a, a problem with scaling. So we wanted to make sure that from the start we knew that if we started to install this in customer sites, which we did, that we were comfortable that it was going to perform well. And it should be all plugin based so people can write their own plugins that aren't necessarily open source and run them similar to like other real projects. We wanted to make it easy to do that. And then also the easy to edit config file, which is basically stolen from SmokePing. They did a really good job on that. And then our ultimate goal was we needed to have an excuse to have a fancy logo. So I'll just go over the brief history. So it took two people three hours, and we were successful, uh, successfully graphing FPing, which is obviously the first plugin we made. And I mean, we kind of cheated because we already had a very fast messaging bus and trading charts from different work we've done in trading financial industry before. Version 3, we met all of our goals, or point 3. We added Python 3. At this point, we had deployed it to a handful of sites and had some other people using it. So we got to fix like real world bugs, which was kind of fun. 4, we needed to add time series database. And the one caveat is it doesn't tie into the real time display, but it, it will store to RD or WhisperDB to store all your latency data. And then we really didn't touch it for, I think, over a year. And then we had another couple customer needs to go through, so we decided to bring it back out, and I talked to more people, and we added an MTR graph. So the version 0.6 we just released today, we moved everything to d3.js, because before that it was our own custom-made library that we didn't want to spend time maintaining. And then obviously, since I knew I was presenting on it, I crammed in more tests and tried to clean up the code a little bit better. So the, the main point of the architecture, like I talked about I.O., everything's asynchronous. And it's designed to be able to like, let any developer <clears throat> write a plugin and not worry about performance. We're, we worry about performance for you. So you can literally just drop in a little script that does anything and not worry about if it's getting 1,000 messages a second. So, we have that, and then we also have it all abstracted. So as things come out in the future, or as needs change, we can easily swap out the I.O. Also, it had to be completely distributed. So you can run probes from any amount of servers and display them in the same spot. And we also have it so you can, you can have like FPing running on two different servers going back and forth, so you actually get both ways, and then graph it on the same graph as well. And then the web interface can run on any server. And like I said, everything's a plugin. So if you want to write a script for some custom thing that you have internally, you can easily do that, drop it in. You don't have to try to fight with merging the code or having a fork. It's just completely separate in your config. And then you can write plugins for any, any, any part of the, the message queuing path, I would call it. So the current plugins we have is fping, which obviously is what I'm sure everybody's familiar with. We have a new MTR style output that really we just kind of did the first version this week and I think we already found a better way to do it so that'll be changing soon but at least it's, it's there to play with. Um, a command plugin and I always like to tease people about this as I put the asterisk there is you can actually, in my testing, it's 10 times faster than SNMP 
to SSH to a Juniper box and do display JSON. So you can get a lot of cool stats out with the command thing. Zero MQ is what it uses for a message bus. We had our old financial stuff in there, but ripped it out just because we don't maintain it any longer and we wanted to make it easy, but it'd be trivial to add any sort of message bus to that. Vodka's a plugin that's a real-time web server, so it's like a daemon. So it's not, it's a stateful web server for high performance, which helps in high performance with multiple messages a second. And then RRD tool and Whisper, as I talked about, just for time series database, if you want to store this and, and query it someplace else. Yeah, I just covered that. Um, like I said, we don't currently graph anything from the database. We just queue through to the database. But you can use Graphite or Plotly really easily to, if you want to query or to do anything with the database. Um, the new, we want to redo command to make it a little easier to use because right now it's a little sketchy. It's, it's mostly just copy and paste it and do your command plugins. Um, I did write a scapey plugin, which is a packet manipulation tool, but it requires root and I didn't have time to figure out how to secure that before Nanog, so that's written. It just has to be root to run and it's, so it's not released yet, or it might be released, I'm not sure. But then I'd really like to hear from people for other ideas on what you would like to see, or better yet, if you want to do a pull request and, and write some stuff, we're, we'll happily take it. Uh, like I said, the MTR was mostly community driven, and we think we have, the, the next way it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be really good. Um, so then it's just the dashboard. This is like a typical, this is up at vaping.20c.com, but the traditional use method for this is we have customers with Knox and they run this on their Knox screens so people can easily watch the network. Um, the top left is the MTR one, the current version of the MTR one. The other top two are just latency graphs. The, um, uh, the second one to the right where it says in and out is how I said with two servers pinging back and forth, so that's a bi-directional ping, so you can actually monitor the lat latency both ways bet between a link. Um, and the rest are just, like I said, latency graphs. When you drill down on any of the latency graphs, you get um, smoke snaps for all the configured things. So these are just multiple hosts that we're pinging at the same time. And then you can see the loss in the bottom, which is like a more familiar to smoke ping style graph. MTR does a trace route and then F pings every hop on the way. And then it shows it as a, as a smoke stack. It's currently kind of goofy right now because the only way I could do it without getting root was to actually run trace route, which uses UDP, and then FPing uses ICMP, and we've actually noticed a lot more than I thought of those packets taking different paths along the network. So hopefully that gets resolved before long. It's still really nice to look at connectivity, like I'm sure everybody that runs an MTR window, instead of that, you can have it on a graph and just be looking at it. And then we, we wanna switch to a vertical one, and then we, we have an idea for doing hop history, so it'll actually show it and time it out better. And then that's, that's what it looks like. Um, the red line shows loss, so if there's loss on a link, it shows a red line. And we're gonna have multiple stacks per hop and then in the future one. Um, it's actually got pretty good documentation, really good compared to like most of my other projects, so there are some docs on it. Um, there's a bunch of config examples and they don't really fit in slides very well, so I'm just kind of skipping over the config thing a lot, but essentially just, it's just YAML or you can use JSON. Uh, you, you define an, a plugin, an output, give it all the data. The, the cool thing is the inheritance, So because I, I find config files can be really tedious when you're doing the same, same thing over and over, so you can see in this example the more fping inherits from standard fping and just changes the count so everything else is the same in that. So you can actually build fairly complex configs really easily. Uh, I talked a little bit about moving to D3. So if you're not familiar with that, it's an open source library that is just done for doing graphs in JavaScript and it's well supported. So it's quite fast for us. It's not quite as fast as our old graphs were when we used to have to deal with like 10,000 messages a second, but I don't see a problem with this um, going forward, depending on the size of your config, but it seems really good. 
and then now we don't have to bother with it. So now there's a bunch of other people that are taking care of the graphing and fixing that and fixing problems and adding features, and it looks a little bit better. But really the important part is just we didn't want to deal with it. So you can see like the side by side, the old versus the new, and it's pretty much the same. And I think I've actually talked enough about the MTR. This is probably a duplicate slide, in fact. So anyway, we're ready to branch it at version one. We figured we'd give it give about a month after Nanog, so if anybody wants to try it out and ask for features or report bugs or something, we would definitely appreciate it. And yeah, and obviously in contributing, a few people have contributed to it already, which is always nice. But even if you don't have anything to do with coding or no time to do it and you have an idea, we love a challenge, so the harder the idea would be better. And I think that's about it. Is there any questions or comments? Hey, John O'Brien, University of Pennsylvania. A uh, little piece of trivia, which is that uh, not every implementation of Traceroute uses UDP. And if yours does, it probably also has a dash capital I option to send ICMP echo requests instead. Yep. I, I'm aware of that. I just didn't want to. I don't think it's platform. It doesn't work on every platform, so I tried to keep it simple. But thank you. All right. Anything else? And then I put links in there for anybody that wants to, aren't familiar with those things and wants to use them.